Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robert Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars, George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Line up, lady! Here we go. And welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. Thanks to Austrian Audio, making passion heard, and Tribooth. Uh, if you'd like to get a $200 discount on your Tribooth, the code is PAP200. Now, speaking of Tribooths, uh, we've seen that Oralex have a new thing, or r- relatively new, called Max Wall. Uh, basically, it's uh, a bunch of panels, like three panels. One has a like a Perspex window in it. Uh, it's four inches thick, and then I think they're about four foot by four foot from memory. The each yeah. panel, four feet so you got tall. twelve foot width, yeah, yeah. four feet tall. But on a stand, and, so they're elevated up yeah. to a height that you choose. You can make it taller if you want. Mm. Yeah, so it's called Max Wall. Mm, Max Wall. Max I thought. Wall. Do they have one for PC users as well? Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cap all in caps, Max Wall. Yeah, for any old English people listening who. Um, would have to be very old. Uh, we're not talking about Max Wall, the person. We're talking about Max Wall <laughs> from Oralex. <laughs> yes. But, uh, it does look Yeah, I looked at it yesterday, and both Robbo and I were looking at it and going, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Until you look at but, the price tag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, pretty exorbitant, isn't it? That has cooled me off of the idea of getting that. <laughs> well, it's if, if you get the three panels, um, it's basically 1300 bucks. Uh, if you get the whole room, which is the four, I think it's close to the two thousand. I'm looking at the you know the full kit, which is called the eleven forty one VB portable recording vocal booth kit, um, which includes eleven twenty by forty eight by four point two five inch panels, a window wall kit, the four stands and the wall clamps and the corner couplers to give you the full kit and caboodle. And that is 2,500 US right now. Could you do this yourself with other products? It doesn't go all the way down to the floor and it doesn't cover the ceiling. No, there's no roof and there's no floor coverage. So there's no, I obviously look at this and And, go, it's a tri booth without the added benefit of being portable, highly portable and doesn't have a roof, and it doesn't have lights, and it doesn't have a mic stand, and a place for copy or a power extension. But it's got a window. It, it's got a little <laughs> yes, window, it, window. It. it does, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it would be very interesting to, to, to A-B that if I had the opportunity to do that, to A-B this with a tri booth, because the two are trying to solve the same exact problem, as far as I can tell. I think this might eat up a little bit more sound, but it, not having a roof is... A huge liability, I think, that the tri-booth takes care of. That's yeah, like, I think the vertical reflection is going to be... The ceilings, thing. like, ceiling reflections, reflections are huge. Depending on the mic you're using, depending on the mic distance from your mouth, depending on how loud you're speaking, the ceiling may have no bearing or the ceiling could be a big problem. It really does depend on the situation. Um, and here, you don't, because you don't have the option of a roof, it, could you buy some more stuff to throw on the roof? Yeah, I guess. Um, you know, but it... It's a solution for somebody that wants to treat a big studio and make an instant vocal booth in a big studio. I was going to say, if you're going to petition, yeah, if you want to try and petition off an already existing room of some description. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Like, yeah, like you say, make a vocal booth in a drum room or something like that, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. the drum room's too live. Do you know what I think is pretty cool, but you can't travel with it? But have, have you guys ever seen the Tay, Taytrix system? No, I think I have. No. I may have seen it AES. Was that that modular wall system that cam locks together and makes like a booth? It stands on itself. It's like Legos. Yeah. And, and, and you can buy some that have a window in it and others that are just panels. And they stack and you can get a roof on the thing. And I think they have some sort of weird door thing as well. But the thing's not bad. I mean, no. in a convention, it was pretty, it was like I'm almost impressed. as good as a vocalbooth.com or something. It Did was you see almost it at AES years ago? Because that's where I saw Years it. and years ago. Yeah, New Years York. and years ago. Yep, New York, yeah. exactly. I thought it was and cool, I think but I haven't seen it since. Have you seen any? Do they exist? It's still online. Okay. Um, 
I think it's kind of expensive because Mm -hmm. I think for that system, the same cost, you can probably put together the same thing, which would be three sides. And I bet you it would cost you about at least two grand. Mm -hmm. I I think these, I think these things are like $500 a piece. They're four by four kit, four by four booth kits, 4,000, the Tatrix. Four thousand. How do you spell yeah. Titrix? How do you yeah. spell it? T i t t a y t r i x. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, and then there's an, there's another company even still called um, Drum Perfect, and that one's a little more conventional. It's just basically big acoustic panels creating a drum booth, but it works really well for voiceover. It creates a really dead chamber for a VO booth too. The few I've heard were really really good. They're again not soundproof. Not intending to be, but they're a little less soundproof than a, a whisper room, I would say. A, sti- a single wall whisper room. It's, and it's not like those plexiglass drum booths. No, those are clear sonic. And those can work pretty well, too, because they make all these different kinds of panels. They they have their sorber panels, um, which Oh, they have really some well. that are not reflective? Yeah, they're just called sorbers, and they're two-inch thick acoustic material with fat, you know, with just black carpet on all the sides. And you can Velcro them together and make taller ones and, you know, make shapes with them and stuff. There's a lot of options these days. That Tatrix ones you're talking about, they've got a nine-piece Gobo package, mm-hmm. which has got yep. a window mm-hmm. panel, five panels with fabric on both sides, three half-height panels. It's 5,880 pounds. So what's that? That's mm, yeah. ridiculous. 6,000 plus. Yeah. If you're going to spend that sort of money, surely you'd be better off just building a proper room, surely. Oh, yes. You can definitely, like, that's the thing is is the portability versus performance. Like, the Tatrix is good for me where I've got a very small room and I don't want to eat it up with a booth, but I've got nowhere else to go. And maybe I'd like to, like, sort of wall off or protect some guitar cabinets or things. So a set of those gobos could be very useful, like in a music context. Or um, the other thing is, I've got a live room. They also like look to, really high. They end are too. nice, and they're very light, so they're su- super easy to work with. Maybe I want to create a corner, but like a dead spot in a more live room for a voiceover or for a vocal. So they they are useful in a studio, but those things are not portable, like a. Tribe. They're not for travel. Let's just put it that way. Portable versus traveling. They're portable that you can pick them up and move them, right? But they're not right. travel friendly. My point was that the Tatrix, I would rather have the Tatrix and the Oralex thing. Oh, absolutely. Thanks. The Tatrix looks like office furniture in comparison. It does. It, it looks does like office much, devices. It? Yeah. 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 But it, it, it does. It looks more like. I used to use office dividers. Yeah, office dividers can work really well. They work. Yeah, depending on the kind and how they're made, but a lot they, of them—the the ones with the big puffy fabric on yeah. them—and there's, you know, if you find those by a dumpster or you find an office, you know how many offices right now are going are, are yeah. closing because nobody's using office space mm-hmm. anymore. There's yeah. got to be a million of those things available, but they're heavy. The best one I ever had actually was one that I should not have sold it. It was probably it was on like three normal door hinges made with the thicker rock saw and just like burlap. And it was probably about two and a half feet thick and, and uh, or wide and maybe like four inches thick. And it just folded in half and you could take this wooden subframe. It was probably the height was easily eight feet and just like stand it up behind somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you yeah. want it, it was light enough. You could just stand it in the corner. Yeah. And, but it was a little bit too big for the people in the studio. So now I'm like hanging blankets behind people to kill the wall because right. my room's a little bit live when I have to do a voiceover. Yeah, I mean, blankets, good, heavy, you know, quilted moving blankets are really, really effective. Um, they're hard to beat for square per square foot cost-wise. They're extremely affordable. Um, and uh, yeah, they're, they are really hard to beat. But man, yeah, you should have no problem finding used office dividers wall dividers, cubicle stuff right now. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good tip, actually. They're they're a bit heavy, but yeah. Yeah, they're bulky they, and heavy. They do work. Gen, to, yeah. s- they may be too short. That's the other thing I'll watch out for. They were really intended for people seated. Mm. And if you're standing, they, they might be too low. So watch out for They have both that. kinds. You, you, you might find some that are about like six feet up. Mm-hmm. 
And then the other ones are like kind of like shoulder, like four yeah, feet up. four or five um, or so. So if you have a sitting situation, they can work. But if not, they they're not they're not the best. And I mean, but but they do work, and they're like pre built, and they have a a decent look to them. You know, they don't look like the weekend job. The shorter ones, you could just you could take the legs off and stick a new set of legs on them too, if you were a little bit handyman minded. Yeah. yeah, true. There's there's actually a company I bought some product from uh, in the states called Versar or Versare. V e r s a r e, and they make a very wide array of office divider type products, like a very very nice, a huge array of different kinds. And one of them is interesting because it's like kind of like corrugated. The walls look like they're corrugated, and so they're flexy, and you can bend them around in circles and semicircles and create a space just by curving them around you, which is kind of cool. I, I've set those up for a couple of people and they're nice and tall too. I think they're six feet tall. Hmm. So the Versar, I'm trying to find the name of them. Is that their wall dividers? Cool. They've got they've got room dividers. Sorry. They've got. Yeah. Room dividers, wall dividers. Uh, they've got um, modular flooring. I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, it's really stuff for office specific, but the, some of them have very good acoustical ratings and they actually do provide our NRC ratings on their products. So you know what you're getting. Um, so that's a good good product to check out too. Yeah. Mm. There there's definitely some office booths, like like there's some companies that make booths for offices that are many, many thousands of dollars, but they're more in the range of like a like an IAC, you know. <laughs> like that's one of Studio Bricks's divisions, right? Is stuff for WeWork and shared office spaces. We work is to studio bricks as the pandemic is to studio source elements, you know, like <laughs> we work, we work, put that company uh, into very big manufacturing uh, space. I mean, they, Oh, Oh, COVID, we yeah. work fluffed up um, studio bricks. Big time. They, they did thousands of booths for we work. It was a massive, massive order for the company. Um, so that's really helped them. But now they have a line of specific for office use uh, booths that are wrapped in fabric that really look the part for an office. And they're less about being dead inside and a little bit more about just privacy. So they have more plexi or more glass and they are they look really nice. I wouldn't have considered using one for VO, but I guess if you stumbled on one cheap, um, probably wouldn't be a bad one to experiment with. Yeah. So has has anybody ever used the Isovox? Yep. I did a review. Type it in YouTube, George Widom Isovox. You'll find my review. The takeaway is a great idea, very smartly designed and built, really well made, good quality, but really, really uncomfortable to use for a voiceover actor, I think. It's just um, yeah. reading and change. does it sound boxy in there or does it work? It's a bit boxy. If you go to the YouTube, you can imagine. hear my audio. Yeah. I record it on a couple different mics yeah. and stuff, and it's confining. Obviously, um, it's quite weird to change pages on a script because you have to have Tyrannosaurus Rex arms where you had to like bend them in this contorted position to reach up and touch your little screen because there's no room for, for your arms. To oh, go. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's got pros and cons, <laughs> but it's not ideal. The voiceover body suit would be better, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is like, it's like the, it, like, that's like the voiceover body hel- or helmet. The the voiceover voice helmet. Of, yeah. Voice How of much body is helmet. like a cone of shame for you that's lined with foam? You just put it around your neck and it has foam around it and would that work? Oh, oh, like a dog collar. <laughs> like a dog cone, but for humans. I saw a picture of one on YouTube. Well, it would serve two purposes. It would stop Robert licking himself at the same time as well. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we don't use cameras. Actually, I found it. Somebody posted it. Yeah, this is what made me think of it. A guy named Sean Allen Pratt on Facebook. Uh, and it's a picture of a guy with a cone attached to his head. And it's kind of like a bonnet. And it's lined in like yellow bed foam. And then he's singing into an SM, SM7B. <laughs> I've seen that. It's ridiculous. So so all you need is the reverse to lower back down on top of you. So you have like the full cone. Right. Like some sort of like shower curtain and like. <laughs> I think the, the one you're talking about, George, that picture, it's like he's got like when you put a dog thing. 
you know, when the dog to stop yeah, the dog. Yeah, it doesn't go all the way around his, his neck. It just goes around no, his face. His face, his face sticks out right. one end like a big trumpet yeah. of yellow foam. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's, it is really hilarious. It's bizarre. So looking at the ISO Vox, how would that compare with the Porter Booth Pro? Uh, I would say it's better and worse at the same time. <laughs> I, yeah. I would rather have a Porter Booth Pro. I just imagine the ISO Vox sounding too tubby. It was a bit tubby. It had a very, very thick bass trap panel in the rear so they really did try to figure out how to control the but it just doesn't do it it just didn't cut it um it the microphone is just far too close to the boundary and when you have a mic that close to the boundary no matter what it's made out of it just changes the sound of the mic it just just like the chaotic eyeball changes the sound of the mic just like you know even a porta booth pro if you put the mic too far back inside the porta booth pro it sounds but well, let me say this. I would rather have the Isovox than the Chaotica. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, all things being equal, I guess. If if space isn't a concern and portability isn't a concern. Yeah. The Isovox was pretty bulky. Like it was a big yeah. ass box. It didn't fold well, down the, very the small. The Chaotica is really small, but I just don't see the Chaotica really ever helping that much with room acoustics. It doesn't help. It that just seems much. to be like all the bad of changing the mic sound without any of the benefit of like Really killing the the room acoustics. You know what like it was you good with? The stuff, only too. mic that it sounded better with in most cases was the uh, Apogee mic, the little tiny USB mic. Like you shove that in there, you had a good pop screen and it sounded decent. Like it, it was it was not bad. But in the Chaotica, yeah. Hmm. And oh, remember a while ago we all said I always tricked you guys and played a Yeti inside of Chaotica, and you guys all thought it sounded good. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's right. Yeah. It can. Did I get But tricked? that was also in a closet. It wasn't just like in an empty room, you know? Yeah. These are all, you know, I I, I have done videos where I shoot out the Chaotica, the Porta Booth, the uh, couple of them on YouTube. And, um, you know, the ones made with the, the blanket materials tend to be the most transparent and the least boxy because they're like a filter. You know, they're not trying to trap the sound. They're just trying to filter it. So they're not really creating a boxy effect as much. Um, do they do they cut out as ma- as many room reflections, or do they do they need assistance in any way? Well, one reason the tri booth works so well is because of its sheer size. So the sound that does get through has a difficult time of making its way back because it now bounces around a bit and then has to pass back through that wall again. Through the exactly, and so yep. yeah, it's the sheer coverage that works so well combined with the weight of the blanket okay i would imagine that if it was just purely of all these ones just like the whole goal is just to minimize room acoustics i would guess the iso max does it the best if it's only about the minimizing iso room acoustics. box or iso the box. max wall the iso the iso oh sorry the the head mounted craziness the iso vox the iso vox oh yeah the one. iso vox is like is very dead inside. <laughs> it's very yeah, dead. It takes care of room acoustics, like, yeah. done. But the problem is it really changes the sound of the mic. And then after that, you get to the Porta Booth. And I think the Porta Booth is the first one where it's like, if you adjust it right, you keep the mic in the right place, you maybe also, you help it just a little bit with maybe a sheet or a blanket behind you. And I think the Porta Booth is, like, definitely functional. The first one that's, like, Functional on the road and seems portable. <laughs> Actually, the yeah. ISO box is not really portable. No, and then it's the not. and then yeah, man, the tri booth like goes right around now. So now, like I said, with the porta booth, you need to help it a little bit, and I think that you get all that help because now now you're surrounded three sixty plus the plus the ceiling. Do you include yeah. like yeah. a little space mat that they can stand on? No, we don't. I mean, we could, but we. In fact, the matter is, in almost every scenario, you can find one locally. You know, at your location, you can almost always find something to stand on. Um, you should provide the ones that are squishy. That, like, you know, like when you're in the convention, oh, the memory for three foam days ones. Straight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that could be an upsell. All you need is those exactly. memory foam mats that you can get at, at uh, for your kitchen or your bathroom. Right. One of yeah, those. the cooks use them. You know. Yeah. The the only time where I've added anything would be just a blanket on the floor. If you're in a very mm-hmm. Spartan hotel or or Airbnb, you throw a big comforter on the floor, and it it really does help. Well, when I've been away with mine, if I'm on a hard floor, which I was when I was up in Byron, 
I just used a beach towel. Mm -hmm. Just chucked a beach towel on the floor. And you notice the difference perfectly. right away? Yeah, it was fine. It worked perfectly. I mean, that was the interesting thing about the tri booth. I, I mean, I did actually with the Porter Booth Pro when I was using that all the time. Um, I did actually get it sounding really good using a, yeah. a forty one six and the getting the mic just poking out of the the um, mm -hmm. the Porter Booth Pro. Yeah. But with the tri booth, I mean, I like the tri booth because you can actually move around in there and everything. But we did that AB a couple of shows back. Uh, where I had to cut into my daughter's voiceover. I had to cut in a word that to change in the script, a pickup. And it was really hard to pick. Mm. And it was weird because, like we said at the time, I had a two different mics. A 41 6 and the SSL, mm -hmm. you know, different while we're mics, on the road. different signal preamps, yeah. everything, right? Yeah. And then we had an OC 18 going through a grace, you know, from the booth here. So, you know, in general, yeah, the, 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 the tri booth will sound really good on a with a 41.6 because that frankly is the mic that was used all along in testing so we knew that it would sound good um it will sound good on other mics too it may not sound as good on a wide pickup pattern mic um but it, it very much does depend on the situation you know the sweats in the room how big the room is how close it is to the wall you know because there's it, it is a filter it's not a iso box um it's not isolating so if you do get too much color, you can move it away from the wall and it will yeah. change the sound a bit. No, they're perfect. But as a conclusion on the Aurelex, it looks kind of cool, but God, it's expensive. It looks cool. It definitely works. I've heard it. But at that price point, there's a lot of other things to look at out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite with thanks to Tribooth and Austrian Audio recorded using Source Connect edited by Andrew Peters and mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging with tech support from George the Tech Whittam Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group To leave a comment, suggest a topic or just say g'day Drop us a note at our website theproaudiosuite.com <laughs>